I'm tired of being a token in a lot of ways. It's like That's a so token of being um, a plus size girl and then like a token of like being a brown girl. Yeah. Because these brands are just checking mm. things off. Hello again. Thank you both for joining me this week in my living room. So cute. I love Thank the yellow. Love it's that. Nice. <laughs> it's Come on. Yeah, yellow. Energy. Um, today we are back with another episode where we will be looking for self-love by dismantling the myth of perfection. I'm so excited to share ways that we can all learn about ourselves and our relationships no matter what stage of life we're in. And Bumble is a safe space for everyone, so I am so excited to get into this. Today we have Katie Lee and Dom Roberts. Dom is a creative artist and the host of the Uncomfortable podcast. And Katie is a plus sized content creator and marketing genius. Hey. Yes. <laughs> so there's a lot of conversations between like body positivity and body neutrality and the idea of, you know, not putting so much emphasis on like I love my body but rather like I love how my body functions and I love that I can walk and breathe and like live life through my beautiful body. How do you guys approach this or navigate through this? I personally take the body neutrality route mm -hmm. just because I think that when you put when you add positive and negative connotation to anything then that kind of sets off this like reactor in your mind mm. that's like this is good and this is bad and I don't think that a body can be good or bad yeah and which I think is kind of what the conversation about this like neutral stance is mm. it's like there's no such thing as a good or bad body there's just bodies mm. that exist mm -hmm. and they're all beautiful they all do what they do and I think <laughs> it's a nice mindset shift just because I think living in this society that does glorify a body, mm -hmm. you know, a certain type of a body, certain type of body mm -hmm. that there's there is a beauty standard um, that is slowly. Well, at least we're slowly trying to deconstruct yeah. it. And I think when you take away the connotation that there could be good or bad, but just bodies existing, mm -hmm. um, it alleviates and creates, I personally think, a lot of freedom towards mm -hmm. the idea that everyone is allowed to exist no matter what their body yeah. looks like. Like we all have imperfections. We yeah. all aren't perfect and that's okay. Yeah. You know? Um, and yeah, I, I think that's an ever like a journey that I am still working through, but I definitely would say that that's something that I have adopted mm. into as a principle in my life. Yeah. I just learned about that shit today. <laughs> um, I didn't know there was a, a new kind of thing going on about yeah. it but I was having conversations with a lot of my peers about being body positive and how um it's just kind of social media has made it into an extreme where it's like you cannot have a bad day yeah. you can't focus on doing making yourself better because yeah. then you're not body positive yeah. or whatever that is and so yeah. I was saying how stressful that was for me as a content creator and as an example to a lot of people um when I say I'm body positive and maybe I want to go take a run today it's like yeah. you're trying to lose weight you're not body positive anymore so I'm I'm liking this new this new thing that's coming yeah. along yeah. um because I think it is all about that just like existing yeah. and just a accepting people for who they are. Um, and I think we need to do more of that. Yeah. Um, you never yeah. know what somebody's going through and why they are the way they are exactly. through past experiences yeah. or for current experiences. And I think that's kind of the stance we should take. Yeah. yeah. Also, one more thing is just really quickly when you said like, I'm going for a run and I'm not trying to lose weight. Right. I just saw a video this morning and it was this guy talking about how like, just purely exercising on a brain level decreases like brain inflammation and brain fog yes. and makes you sharper and more yes. able to think creatively. 1, and like not everything has to do with physical appearance. No, I yeah. literally hate running and I hate working out, but I do <laughs> it. Insane. Like I have like a, a club called I Hate Running Club. Yeah. I like, want I'm to join that. Yeah. And it's like, um, and we're kind of, been, yeah. It's, it's not because I want to do those things. I know it's good for me to focus during yeah. the day and it gets rid of a lot of my anxieties. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I, I'm also like, as I grow older too, I'm like, 
Uh, and we, we have more open conversations about things that we're even eating, like the processed foods and mm. stuff. Like it's not because I'm losing weight. It's because like our body is our yeah. vessel yeah. and kind of like you become what you eat. So it's yeah. kind of like knowing that like certain things have like toxins that we shouldn't yeah. be eating. Like there's this whole thing about gut health too. I don't know. I'm like yeah. actually getting yeah. really, Although it's really I and on how do. it affects you during the day on how you yeah. how, like act during the day and yeah. how like if you're really tired it could be something that you're eating yeah like, or like just knowing cortisol levels or whatever yeah, yeah. and like how you function as a person at work and like yeah. having these conversations that also can um like what you can um affect i don't know people might be on have mental issues yeah. too like it all just intertwines yeah. but it doesn't mean that you're trying to alter yourself because yeah. it's a physical appearance. i mean yeah. yeah i think like what concerns me about the whole like gut health thing on tiktok yeah. that's happening right now is it is very much an opportunity to like for capitalism to transpire yeah. and it's like well it's already oh, helping they're doing those bloating um, yeah the bloating the greens pills, yeah. the like yeah no that's not what i'm talking drops, about like oh, oh yeah. my goodness i'm not talking about yeah. that there's um girls, just like educational, like, like educational yeah. things about the food that you yeah. eat um that we've I'm grown up yeah. grown up to known being good but they're actually not that good for yeah. you yeah for sure i mean i'm not even really like deep dived yeah, yeah i'm really not deep dived into it yet but i'm starting to actually be like yeah caring yeah about those things because i used to not growing up because that's not how we grew up yeah so i agree <clears throat> i agree and yeah i think that growing up in the early 2000s with like diet culture yeah. and so many different ads targeted towards like body like what how your body can look like if you if you only have cayenne pepper and lemon juice oh my like god you <laughs> apple <laughs> cider vinegar yeah there's whatever. so yeah. many different things that i think has affected the way that health can be viewed yeah and yeah. i think that's kind of like the beauty of body neutrality is like if i have to buy a pair of pants at a bigger size I'm not going to be like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's the but end it of the it world. affects you. And yeah. um, sometimes what I used to do was, when it, it used to affect me really heavily, mm -hmm. cut the tag. Because mm -hmm. brands make jeans different. So this is kind of yeah. like in, going into a different topic. But you would want to go for fit rather than just actual, like the size, size number. Yeah. But we've been trained to be like size number, size number, yeah. size yeah. number. Yeah. And I think like taking that away of being like, okay. I had to buy a bigger size. I had to buy a smaller size. I whatever, yeah. and just kind of being like, I need clothes that fit me. Fit, yeah. I yeah. need. I'm eating this because I have IBS, and like <laughs> if I have dairy, yeah. I will go to the bathroom, or I don't have <laughs> IBS and I'm gonna enjoy whatever I want. <laughs> There's this group that has like <laughs> IBS awareness. Yeah, because <laughs> a lot of people have IBS, and it's yeah. like it's real. Like it's, yeah, it's a yeah. real thing. It's I don't me. have IBS, but lactose intolerance yeah. definitely yeah. hits me I think in a everybody rough does, spot. But no, okay, but that's the thing about lactose. And, this is like going off really topic, <laughs> but like dairy isn't like our dairy, like America's dairy oh, is it's not, not good for you yeah. compared to like dairy elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we have these no, it's intolerances. Crazy. I'll like no. eat a bunch of cheese in France and I'm fine. Fine. Yeah. It's no. crazy. It is really crazy. Yeah. This is like, this is like a whole nother podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean like the FDA regulations for America are so different yeah. than yeah. those for like Europe. Like our food is genuinely terrible for yeah. you yeah <laughs> and i think like these are all things that we can like acknowledge and like yeah. accept and be like these are things i care about and like for someone else they could be like i really don't care at all and yeah. it's just like this stance of great you're yeah. still accepted like yeah yeah it that, yeah it doesn't matter what but you know today's side it's like oh i care about like food it's like oh you're trying to lose weight you yeah. know what i mean yeah instead of just being neutral about it and being like oh she just cares about her overall health yeah and yeah her overall yeah. and being yeah i think yeah. removing the ego and not this is all new stuff because yeah. if you think about it 10 years just 10 years ago oh yeah this stuff is not a topic of conversation yeah so we are living in a very internet focused time in our lives where it's really easy to like fall into traps of seeing other people on the internet and feeling bad about yourself so how do you guys break out of that i mean it's really hard i think because the internet doesn't allow you to grow as a person mm. um it doesn't really allow you to make mistakes yeah. um for me um i i separate I show myself, but I also separate myself from yeah. social media because of that fear of like, you can't really make a mistake. You can't share certain moments, but then at the end of the day, sometimes I do want to share certain moments. But um, I think just being authentically yourself is so important. Um, I mean, people fall in love with you for you. Yeah. And being real is so important uh, because for me, I always see when people are being fake. Yeah. yeah. 
I think that's the magic and the demise of social media yeah. is you can build whatever kind of persona you want to come as. Like, yeah. you can come as a completely, like a character almost, yeah. like someone who's not, that's like not who you are when you go home and like shut yeah. down your phone and like close your computer. Yeah. Like you could be a completely different person than the one you present online. 100%. And you also have the opportunity to show up like authentically as yourself, like you were saying, which I think is so true. And I think that's kind of where you grab the power back yeah. and you take the power into your hands and you say, I'm gonna show up every day online yeah. and be myself. Yeah, so both of you guys being real on your platform, that takes a lot of courage and confidence and that's something I struggle with. So how do you guys, how did you like find that? How did you decide to be so open and real on social media, which can often be a really hateful place? Right. For me, growing up, I didn't see anybody like me, yeah. as in size, as in nationality, uh, hair color. Like I just didn't. I've never seen somebody who looked yeah. like me. I think the closest thing, like I would always gravitate to whatever Asian girl, a girl with brown hair or was brown skin, and be like, "That's my girl," even though she didn't look like me. And I thought, like you know, um, it just kind of happened organic for me on yeah. my platform there wasn't really any plus size models out and um, people were just really following my journey mm -hmm. and then the more I shared about it the more um, I got an audience for it uh, but for me how to stay confident I mean I do have my bad days just like anybody yeah. else but I think about if I'm helping out that one person yeah. you know I came from like a very small town in the Bay Area and so it's like we, we didn't really go out and do with things we stayed yeah. home and a lot of my friends still are home and um, just being that one person to be like no my dream is this and I yeah. can achieve that because I've been told no so many times uh, being a model is not in in my future yeah. being an influencer was definitely not in my future um, but or even like before that I was a publicist and yeah. doing all that stuff that just wasn't in the cards for me. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, just knowing that I might be that one person that is helping one person yeah. out there yeah. is all that really matters to yeah. me. And um, just being authentic and like, you know, I, I recently did, I was naked for women's health. <laughs> that shit was really scary yeah. and a very vulnerable moment for yeah. me. Um, but I mean, there's a, a little girl out there yeah. or a boy or whatever and it's like, you know, sees me and maybe relates to me in some yeah. way. And that just kind of gets rid of everything else around yeah. it. That's really nice. Yeah, I would have to agree. I think representation has a lot to do with it. Um, just especially with the standards and like some of the standards that are being deconstructed like as we speak. And I think it's a very exciting time yeah. to like be a part of such an incredible time. I don't know, even in history, to be yeah. honest, like, yeah, same, like growing up early, I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me. Yeah. Um, there wasn't anyone who I felt exactly felt like fit the same mold as me. Yeah. And so a lot of the time I would same like trying to cling on to whoever the closest person who I was just like, oh, I feel seen by them. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I'm in a really cool position now where I get to provide that for others, yeah. whether it's through what I say or what I look like. Um, both are really cool. And of course, there are always going to be people who have some bad thing to say. But I think personally in my experience there's been a lot more good yeah. that people have to say and I have a lot more positive than I receive in negative and I think typically it's easy to allow one negative comment to ruin the hundreds that I've gotten yeah, yeah. yeah but I think that's something that I try and practice every day is like gratitude really and nice. thankfulness and like focusing on like okay that's one person out of the hundreds of people who have messaged me and been like you inspire me and like you help yeah. me become better because yeah. I feel like that's what we're all trying to do through community through social media yeah. is like connect and grow and become better you know yeah. this conversation is so relevant because it is truly a form of body shaming. And I have to say Bumble does a really good job of detecting that behavior. And one of their policies is around body shaming, shaming language, which I think is really cool. Basically, if body shaming language is detected in a profile or a chat, the user will receive a warning. And if the comment is deemed particularly harmful or if it's a repeated type of behavior, Bumble will permanently suspend the user from the app. And I feel like that is kind of the step that we need to be seeing in kind of all forms of like, Brands. entertainment and yeah, yeah. The, that, the fact that they're gonna do that I think that's great yeah especially to ban them because <laughs> yeah. like that's really taking a stance that yeah. that behavior is just not acceptable yeah. anymore yeah. I think it's so interesting too how like 
I just talked about this in a previous episode, but like before people are fully confident within themselves, they seek a lot of external validation and being on a dating app kind of leaves you vulnerable to seeking that external validation. So if you receive a comment about the way that you look or anything of that nature that can like really truly affect you, especially because when it comes to dating, that's where you're kind of like in your most vulnerable space if you haven't like well, they say like dating is much. based off of looks, right? That's the first thing people see. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So it so, can be kind of hard. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think this is something that I struggled with for a really long time. Yeah. And I feel like I've kind of through just like processing everything and gaining like more like self-love and acceptance, which is just a, an ever occurring journey. Yeah, I think it's really important to not like place your your worth and yourself yeah. in if someone finds you attractive or not because the reality is is there are so many random things that i find attractive that yeah. my friends are literally like what the hell yeah and my friends might show me someone and i'm like girl what the hell like you know <laughs> what i'm saying it's yeah. just a back and forth and i think one of the most important lessons that i learned from my friend kareen um she created this game called We're Not Really Strangers. I don't know if you guys yes. have ever heard of it. Yeah. yeah. And one of the, we were talking about dating one time and I was just like, girl, it's the trenches out here. <laughs> and she was like, focus on compatibility. Like every, compatibility is the most important thing, you yeah. know? I, uh, if something doesn't work out, it's due to compatibility. You guys just weren't compatible. And I think it's really easy if something doesn't work out, you're like, oh. I must be trash or right. there must be something wrong with me or maybe self shaming. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe if I change this and do this, then I'll get this kind of person when in reality, that's not true at all. Yeah. When I look at all of my relationships that I love and cherish and protect, I don't think, wow, I had to do all of this stuff to get these relationships. No, yeah. they happen organically. Yeah. And I think the same thing honestly rings true to dating. And of course, easier said than done, you are putting yourself in a very vulnerable state. You are yeah. having to kind of take a leap of faith and put yourself out there. And yeah, people can be cruel sometimes, you know? So it's really hard to have to dust yourself off yeah. and do it again or not take it personal if a date doesn't work yeah. out. But at the same time, I think if your worth and validation comes from the fact that you're well pleased with yourself that you enjoy yourself at the end of the day when you go to sleep and your head is resting on your pillow and you're looking up at your ceiling and you're just thinking damn i rock yeah. like how you know i think those are the moments that really help when you're like it's the trenches out here yeah also, it's, it's confidence. Yeah. Uh, I grew up very shy yeah. and very aware that I wasn't skinny. Mm. And I thought that I was like, how are guys going to like me when I was in college and um, and in high school? And I, I realized um, through actually this was my cult era. I was part <laughs> of a sorority, <laughs> my little cult era. But um, no, but the, the one thing that I got from it, other than like a few lifelong friends, which are oh, great, yeah. but is they teach you how to talk to people mm. and um, when you're recruiting and stuff. So they teach you how to introduce yourself and be confident in how to interact. And I would say when I took those traits with me um, and added my personality to that, mm. walking in a room with confidence, people are focused on the confidence. Mm. It doesn't matter how, how you look, mm. you know what I mean? They were just focused on that energy yeah. and people are attracted to that as well. And um, that was one of my main things that I took and I was like, oh, okay, it's not like me, it's my confidence. I yeah. need to just like really shine through when I walk into a room. And, and I thought about a lot of the friends that I was attracted to, like as in like for friendships yeah. and, and they, it was, because of their confidence they yeah. just had a really great personality and energy yeah. and like when i met you i was like dude you have a really good energy yeah you have like the cutest like you just like yeah, look you, so happy yeah. and like <laughs> positive <laughs> and that was like i was like oh i love that about yeah. you and that attracted me to you to like talk to you and get to know you you know what i mean yeah yeah so i think that's like really important too yeah i yeah. mean i think it's just all really interesting like the way that capitalism and the patriarchy all have their like spin on this entire idea of like feeding off of women's insecurities and perpetual like making it a perpetual cycle to create lack of confidence in women because that like 
feeds, but they don't think about people. That's just like all marketing based yeah. and how they can get money. But yeah. Going off of women's insecurities is what sells and drives yeah. their product. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy because usually they're all men owned um, companies. Yeah. Like if you actually look at a lot of the documentaries that are coming yeah. out um, with these, a lot of these brands, they all are started by men. Some of the major fashion um, brands that are, that we are all consuming today are owned by men and yeah. they know that they can yeah. capitalize off that yeah it's yeah dark yeah and i think that what you're talking about like the patriarchy the cycle of us kind of being at the will yeah. of society and what they deem to be like true or not true i think that's where i definitely had in the past like had my struggles of like damn like if i could only change and i think that we all think yeah that. we yeah. all we all have moments till this like, day yeah it could be just anything it doesn't have to be about your body yeah it could be just yeah. like your a mannerism yeah, yeah. and it's and yeah. that's what the whole thing about like body positivity is to me it's like i love being body positive but i don't necessarily like i think social media has made it to the point where it's un unenjoyable to be body positive because i mm. can't have a bad day or a bad thought about myself oh, interesting. yeah and um and then i'm not body positive yeah, if i want to be healthy for my mental health yeah um and has nothing to do with losing weight then i'm not body positive yeah. or whatever so it's kind of gone to an extreme a little bit for I, me in my experience yeah least. i think yeah i think definitely for me as well i f more so focus on trying to be become a person that i really enjoy yeah and trying to become a person that I'm extremely happy with because I think when we fall into this hamster wheel, the trap, the perpetual cycle that you were talking about of trying to be perfect, look perfect, feel a certain way. The reality is, is yo, when I turned 12 and like <laughs> started hitting puberty, I had stretch marks like right off the jump. Yeah. And I could go yeah. on social media today and scroll on Instagram and see someone pregnant. And I'm like, damn, like honestly, them turned around they look the same like yeah i you know we could compare all day long and trying to fit into this mold yeah and change things about ourselves that at the end of the day no amount of surgery no amount of like chemical peels like you yeah. name it are going to change anything yeah so if this is the body that i have if yeah. this is the person that i am I'm gonna focus on what I can change. Yeah. I'm gonna grow into a person that I'm extremely happy and well pleased to be around. Yeah. Like if I were to meet myself as a stranger, I'd be like, damn, this person's lit. Like yeah. I wanna be their friend. Yeah. And I think the more you start to hone into that and start to hone into like, what are some things that I actually can change yeah. that would help me grow into a better person? The less you're looking for these materialistic things. Yeah. I think that was a huge shift personally in my mindset. Would I would try and be like, okay, so we're gonna do this. And if I do this, then that means that I'm gonna be like this. And then you know, planning yeah. like that. Instead, I'm like, what is my, what do I need today? Yeah. Like, do I need to FaceTime a friend? Do I need to like take myself out on a date? Do I want to start a new book? Do you know? And I think once I started to kind of date myself in a yeah. way, I realized that when I would go on dates with other people, I would be like, I don't want you. Yeah, yeah. I don't even want you. I, mean, I actually don't even like you, TBH. And I think in the past, I would go on dates and be like, god please yeah like just i need i need help what if they don't like me and i'm like wait what if i don't even like you yeah. you know yeah and i but that's growth yeah like yeah. as you get older too you're just kind of like this is what i want yeah when you're yeah. young you're kind of like oh you could try to fit in you're trying to like check boxes but when you kind of work on that self-growth and self-love yeah. you go on dates and you're kind of like like you go back to that uh compatibility thing yeah like if we're not compatible then we're not compatible and that's it yeah and it's no hard feelings at the end of the day and for me that was such a breath of relief yeah. I feel that I've just been feeling like these past two years especially since I really started to tap into that and because it's exhausting yeah if not then you are just going to be exhausted 24 7 you're going to be miserable yeah um <laughs> yeah I, I mean no truly it's so hard to just keep going on that wheel and the only thing you can do is really just break the cycle and yeah. say hey 
I'm honestly never going to be those things that people have put on a pedestal, but I can be my own self. Yeah. And if you're into that and if you're down with that, then cool, I'm here. Yeah. And if not, all good. And I hope you find what you're looking for. Yeah. And yeah, I think that detached self from what we put on a pedestal is so helpful because it's no hard feelings. Yeah. I mean, that's a really mature way to like view yourself and view the world. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at that and I'm like, that's really inspiring because I'm 20 years old. I just turned 20 like a couple months ago. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Scary 20s. Um, But, you know, it is like really exhausting putting so much emphasis on my identity like from an outward perspective like the way that people perceive me as the value of my identity and I'm like starting to break that cycle now and I'm I learned a lot about this in high school about like getting worth from exploring my passions and my curiosities and working on my intelligence and my capability to love and be kind and um you know be warm and welcoming and then going on social media and kind of like having a growth on social media put me back into the place of like, oh, well, people love me. One, because I talk about politics and people really enjoy that. And two, because of the way that I look and being able to break from that has been really scary Yeah. because it's like, well, people still love me if I look different. I would say your generation has it kind of hard. It's, it's just really scary to yeah. like not be the perfect version yeah. that everyone loves. I... 100% feel this yeah. so hard and it's hard because being chronically online we are being perceived 24 7 whether we want to or not and I think it's really hard because in in some ways you have you feel like you have to keep up with whatever's happening online yeah. and how you're you're presenting yourself online but at the same time you also are literally 20 years old and we're just in our early 20s trying yeah. to figure everything out and you're growing up and trying to learn really like the all the hardest lessons and yeah it's it's extremely hard and i'm like in the same boat yeah. as you too like it's an everyday wait struggle. i'm no longer in my 20s but, um, <laughs> i feel like i could give the best advice cuz yes, i i have been there i think like when you're just out of high school going to college or in college or not or whatever in that early 20 era you're really into self discovery you yeah. want to fit in you yeah. you don't want to make mistakes but i feel like looking back I, and I was really aware of that and very sensitive to that. And looking back, I'm like, damn, no, you got to own that shit. And it's about growth. And I always call it like my pussy power years (laughs) because it's really like you are really, you're really on top right now. Like this is the year, like you're young, you have a, like, you don't have anything set in stone yet. Like you're really building your empire, whatever your empire is for the both of you guys. Um, And I don't feel like I really owned it because I didn't know I had it. Mm. But looking back, I'm like, dang, I really had that. Like, um, boys, great. But no, I'm really building what I want to do be as an individual and how I want to grow as an individual and you're going to make mistakes because you're going to hang out with people that maybe aren't right for you or be with people that maybe are not right for you but in return you learn from them and you become a better well hopefully you become (laughs) a better person from those experiences yeah Yeah. um but yeah like i actually am excited for you guys because like those are actually looking back like i wish i like kind of seized the moment a little bit more yeah but those Um, moments are the best um in your early mid 20s because you're just like it's true self-discovery and yeah. true growth of what type of individual you want to be in society and for yeah. and like you as a person and then what's great is how you tie it in is, is how you want to be for your partner yeah, yeah. Um, and what you want to get out of your partner mm. yeah and what you give yeah so like you just mentioned about like finding a partner and great how do you show up as your authentic self on a dating app when so much of it is like majority at first glance like looks driven or yeah well baby girl is engaged so she's not on a <laughs> dating app but um i think if i were on a dating app how i would do stuff i mean yeah we have the images and those are look driven as well but i'm obviously but i think really adding your personality and into the profile yeah and um don't cut corners like literally if you don't like something say like i'm not into this type yeah. of like 
don't put a hiking pic if you ain't gonna go hiking. Yeah. My best friend <laughs> thought she's like, I'm gonna put a hiking pic up there. And I was like, girl, you don't even hike like that. Yeah. And she went on a date and the guy took her on a hike and no. it was like five plus miles. They're actually, they actually are dating now. Like they actually, it ended up working out. But like one time he took her on an 11 mile hike and oh, she's wow. like, girl, I no. nearly died. And I was like, it's because you put that picture up and you should have put mild hiker, not like, everyday hiker but I mean yeah. just like being authentically yeah, being authentic, yeah. yourself and like don't worry about what other people are perceiving you because how what I was told look your life is like a beach right and there's so many grains of sand on that beach so if you're dating one person it doesn't work out that's just like one grain, yeah. gra uh, grain of sand on your yeah. beach you just move on yeah so um, I think you just add personality to your profile that's authentic and truthful to who you are as a person because yeah. there is somebody out there for you it's about finding that right person yeah, yeah I agree but I don't know because like, it's back to compatibility no, too. Yeah, yeah it's compatibility but I don't know what it's like current day because I've been off of it for like six plus years so I'm like goals um <laughs> <laughs> I'm like slay um uh, I am on the apps and I think for me personally I think this is my thought process through it is if I'm like creating my profile i'm always thinking the person that i want to be with what if i put a joke on there or if i put like a silly pic of me in like 0.5 zoomed out hmm. and like just being a little goober yeah. i would think they would see that and be like oh she's funny or this you know and 100 percent what you're saying just displaying yourself in like a true authentic way versus putting my like most top liked photos and being hella yeah. vague yeah okay that's not me at all yeah. like tbh can't shut the hell up yeah. so probably gonna add all of that yeah. and you gotta add a few bad pictures yeah go like ahead. no you know, yeah you reminded me because my <laughs> my fiance's <laughs> friend was on, went on a date he set up his dating profile and i looked at it, i was like oh no we gotta change all of this up we gotta add he's like we had to add a couple good pictures and then we get to add like you know, we have to show all the yeah. cases of your personality. Yeah. 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 Have like, I don't know. I just try and make everything as well-rounded as possible yeah. because I always say that I am like an in real life experience, not really like a <laughs> yeah. online experience. Like yeah. I feel you like- you put that on your dating profile? I feel like you should have that <laughs> yeah. as your tagline. Because I am, it's if like you were line. to like talk to me, honestly, I'm the worst at responding to texts. Like <laughs> I only use voice memos. Like, But I think that's fun. Like if you had put that on there, then like, yeah. I'm an in-person experience, not an online. Yeah. Because I'm really bad at text messaging. And yeah. like, I, like I think that shows your personality. I'm the worst. No, oh, it's I bad. am so bad. Oh my God, are you guys with the people that are like 100 text messages unread? Because I cannot. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, like you guys, I'm really <gasps> like, no, I have like I 900. I that would give me an anxiety no, it's attack. Up. We should I, never text each no, other. No, <laughs> I will call you. I will FaceTime. I oh tell people, God, I will FaceTime you. I will call you. I will voice memo you. Yeah. And I just kind of let them know that. I'm like, yeah, take me out on a date. I'll show you a good time. Like, yeah. I'll show you on fun. Uh, but I think it kind of goes back to, okay, the people that, the girls that get it, get it. Yeah. Like, the guys that get it, get it. Yeah. And if they don't, then they don't. sorry, yeah, <laughs> you missed the mark. Like, <laughs> you missed what was trying to go yeah. down. So we are making great strides as a society, but there is no denying the fact that there is still so much work to do, and we have to continue striving. You know, so many companies being male-founded really shines the light on Bumble, which is a woman-founded company, and they empower you to set your own pace with dating, which I love. But it's also recognizing that this work also comes from within. On the bright side, I also really want to talk about this new anti-cyber flashing bill that was introduced back in January, which would effectively push back against harassment and unwanted sexual images in a concrete way. Right now, it has passed in Texas, Virginia, and California, and they are working on making it pass nationwide on the federal level. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm sad that we have to wrap this episode up because I feel like I'm learning a ton from you guys and you guys just have really incredible energy and it's really nice to talk to you guys. But before we wrap, what are some like little tips and tricks on increasing your self-worth? To be honest, growing up, I would always hear people be like, love yourself first and yeah. like true love will follow. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, like how do you do that? Like yeah. what are some practical, actual things? Like what does it mean to love yourself? Yeah. And I think loving yourself looks like doing things that make you happy, um, 
doing things like learning more about yourself sometimes things that feel good aren't necessarily good for you mm -hmm. so finding out like how are some what are some things you can start doing right now that are a challenge but in the long term are good for you yeah and i think those are all steps towards growth self-discovery but also building yourself into a person that you love and you're proud of because mm -hmm. at the end of the day like that is what self-love is yeah like it is making these conscious choices mm -hmm. these mindful choices that build you into a better person for yeah. tomorrow yeah um i think it's a journey just to add to that um you're never going to reach perfection or like i've solved it i've gotten down no it's a journey throughout you as a person growing yeah. so accepting that and accepting those times where you have to rediscover mm -hmm. and relearn and relove because mm -hmm. it's constant change in life whether oh. you like that or not yeah um but be vulnerable and yeah. put yourself out there and learn and grow through that um, and really determine what you want as an individual yeah. um, and what person you want to be. So yeah. I it's think like, that's just like journey growth, like all the, all that stuff yeah. mixed in together. Just be open. Yeah. And even though like what you just said was almost a little bit scary, the idea of like having to relove and relearn and all this stuff, like the risk is so much smaller than the reward. Yeah. You know, like having to do that might be troublesome in the moment, but ultimately at the end of the day, like it will put you in a better position to like navigate through life and love and just be a just better know you. The journey doesn't stop yeah. and just be open to the journey. Yes. Yeah. It just never stops. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys again. Thank you so much thank for having you. us. Thank you so much for tuning in to Looking For. Make sure to drop your own thoughts or advice on self-acceptance in the comments. I'm Amelie Zilber, and I will be back with another episode next week brought to you by Bumble right here on the Past Your Bedtime YouTube channel.